Hello all, we're really excited to welcome you to the first CPCT, that's Crystal Palace Community Trust podcast. We're really excited to be partnering with the wonderful Monique, founder of Equalus, a campaign for equal representation in healthcare education. This campaign is about improving maternity training resources to represent black and brown skin tones, as well as minority groups within our teaching institutions. And if like me, when you found out that this wasn't the case and just think this is absolute madness in this day and age. And when I heard about the frankly dangerous lack of representation in healthcare um, education, you can't help but want to amplify Monique's critical voice. So that's why we chose to talk to Monique for our first podcast and also to celebrate Black History Month. Monique, just to give you a little bit of background about this amazing woman, has recently launched her campaign but also has recently launched a podcast called Chat for Change, talking about all things representation. Do you want to just quickly talk about that? Um, Yeah, so um, I have a few kind of midwifery friends and we thought it's uh, kind of about time that we we made these kind of conversations a little bit less taboo. So we um, we came together, we reviewed a, um, a study based on uh, five students who also kind of, ex- and their experiences basically, um, while they studied their midwifery on their midwifery courses. And um, just looking at how, um, how much disparity there is within the teaching kind yeah. of curriculum, and the experiences on placement as well. So we kind of wanted to highlight that in the study, but then also relate that to our own experiences as well. Um, so yeah, so. it's a great it's a great listen. And if you haven't done, please um, go and have a listen wherever you get your podcasts from, um, because it really is great and really highlights some of those issues that you're trying to tackle with your campaign. Um, and you've done your first, first podcast. This is our first podcast as a charity. And we decided to do it to celebrate Black History Month, which is a really important month for us as a charity. But the reason you might see that uh, the timing is at the, actually at the end of Black History Month. And the reason is, is because, you know, Black History Month is great, but we really have to be talking about these issues throughout the whole year. Yeah. Um, so at CPCT, you know, we're going to take this next year to really start having some of these, as you say, conversations that need to be out in the open more. Um, Just quickly before we move on to the main part of the podcast, I just wanted to say a big thank you to the legendary Raymond, who is, uh, we're using his wonderful facility here. Um, And he is a trustee at CPCT um, and all round amazing guy, founder of Ballers Club, and also Blueprint Plaza, which we're using today, um, and does a lot of this stuff off his own back um, and doesn't get the support that he should get from, you know, those people that should be supporting him. So, right. Back to Monique. Sorry. That's all right. So, (laughs) as if all of this stuff that we've just talked about wasn't enough, you also are training to be a midwife. You're also a mother of three. As a mother of three myself, that is a full-time job. It is. And you do all of these other things. And we hear congratulations is in order. So you have just delivered 30 babies and counting. Right. Yes. Uh-huh. So what does that mean? What what happens when you re- reach those births? So um, there's there's other components to it. But to be a fully registered qualified midwife with the NM- NMC, um, you have to um, have facilitated 40 births. So I'm on my countdown now, so I've got 10 to go. Ah. Um, but alongside that, you have to have 2,300 at practice hours. You have to have looked after 100 neonates, 100 postnatal um, birthing people, and 100 um, antenatal um, birthing people. So, yeah, so with that, that's your kind of, that's your practical side of it. And then obviously, by the time you reach the third day, you've got your dissertation, you've got essays, wow. you've got mini essays. Um, I think at some point there's a presentation. Um, <laughs> Some point. Um, somewhere in there so yeah so there's a lot of academic work and, and it's, it is a 50 50 split okay. but I think when you're juggling that with home life you're juggling that with children possibly even some there's some students that are working as well um which there's no way I'd be able to do with three children but I, I think it's definitely kind of doable if you have the right support I think 
Um, so yeah, so that is all that is needed to to become uh, qualified. Mm. It's a lot. It is a lot. lot, I didn't realise there was um, such a balance between the kind of practical and the theory as well. Yeah, I think every university does it different. So our our university does kind of blocks. So you have, you know, maybe a six week block in university and then you'll have six weeks in placement. And Mm. so you kind of flip between the two, Um, which is good because it means that you can carry over your theory into practice and really understand, you know, how to link the two. Yeah. So, yeah. And we'll come on to the kind of more traditional training that you've had um, later on. But you're also really interested in holistic techniques um, and supporting expectant mothers in in some of those techniques. Can you just talk to us about those a little bit? Yeah, so I've just done a KG hypnobirthing course. um, And it's just to kind of, I want to kind of fill my cup with uh, lots of different kind of um, alternative practices so I want to do hopefully aromatherapy, reflexology, and then have that alongside the, the hypnobirthing. And that is hopefully in time is to kind of be able to give mothers or birthing people from low so- social economic backgrounds and all those who have had um, a birth trauma. Um, not, I mean, other people are invited, of course, but specifically yeah. those type of people, those groups of people, um, because we want to kind of create a, a, a level playing field. Not everybody yeah. can afford um, hypnobirthing. Not everybody can afford massage classes. Mm-hmm. And I think if that goes um, some way to improving an outcome for somebody, yeah. then absolutely. And then uh, on top of that, we want to be able to give not give back because you already have the power, but help women to kind of recognize and regain that power that they had. Mm-hmm. Um, the, and they might have thought they've lost it through the trauma or through not being able to access yeah. certain classes. So um, the idea is eventually to have classes that are accessible for all people. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And and you're right, it's really important because I think, you know, as, as I mentioned, I'm a mother of three and... You know, the NHS care is wonderful, but we all know that the NHS is is so stretched. And, you know, those alternative therapies that are out there that, you know, really helped me in in my kind of birthing Mm. journeys. Yeah, you're right. They're really expensive (laughs) and they're great, Um, but they should be accessible to all. And that's amazing that you've kind of recognised that and, you know, you're going to be working to try and fill some of those gaps because for me you know becoming a mother was the most wonderful thing but also one of the most lonely and yeah one of the most traumatic things mm-hmm. that you do and sometimes you you can feel really alone um and so having lots of different things to to help you through that that process as you say making your cup really full but for me as I get older I'm learning that everything's about balance and, and you know it's not just one thing that's going to fix a problem there's lots of different little things that you should be doing yeah absolutely um I think if you've had a traumatic time as well you already have an idea in your head a negative idea in your head about what birth and labor kind of entails and I think with the hypnobirthing it uses kind of relaxation techniques to get you in a space where you are kind of uh, targeting your subconscious and allowing kind of positive um, thoughts and embedded kind of suggestions to kind of go in so that when you are, you know, back in that space where you're having your baby or you're laboring, you can then use those kind of techniques to kind of, you know, reframe the idea that you had. Yeah. um, Giving you kind of hopefully a calmer, kind of more in control birth. And I think for me that then leads on to, you know, the type of mother that you're going to be as as well or, or can do um you know because again it's like so about for me it's about balance and if you have that you know you just you need lots of different techniques to help you I think cope mm. with with modern motherhood yeah, yeah, um and I think for me definitely becoming a mother was kind of a kickstarter for me to look after myself a little bit more so I can look after my children it's for them but it's really important to do that I hate the term self-care but it is it is really I know it is I know (laughs) um but yeah yeah cool so let's move on to your kind of learning experiences and and what started your campaign because you know uh, 
that's what we're really here to talk about. Yeah. Um, so I think I think it was in year two of my training that uh, myself and a, a few of my colleagues kind of recognised that when we had lectures and they would put up the slides, the slides would always be those of a Caucasian appearance, mm -hmm. either the mother, the father or the baby. Um, and um, certain circumstances where, you know, we had to kind of recognise signs of infection, for example, mm -hmm. that might present differently on a, on a, on a person of colour. Mm. So when you go into practice, how are you going to relate the two? Yeah. You know, I, can't, I know what it looks like on a Caucasian skin tone, but I have no idea how to identify that on someone else's skin tone. So then in my mind, that kind of contributes to the disparity when... In, in terms of the actual care that's provided, because if your healthcare provider doesn't know how to recognise it, because in their training, they are not taught to kind of look at yeah. these things. Um, are we failing? We're failing our women. Then. Are we, we not failing I mean, the people that we're meant to be taking care of? We, I mean, we yeah. totally, totally are. If you're not taught how to recognise something, how yeah. can you then recognise that? And it should be that? a given. It should yeah. be a standard. It should be. Um, so, yeah, so that's where it's the ideas kind of come from. Um I created an Instagram page, first of all, um, and I kind of wanted to start creating gallery of um, images that I know there is um, Mind the Gap and other other kind of organisations out there. But I kind of wanted one that was specific to maternity. So I kind of started creating a gallery or wanted to create a gallery of images so that people can kind of go on the page and, you know, if they've recently had a baby or or not they can kind of look to see what well, oh that, i know what that is now i've, I've seen it i yeah. know what it looks like but even trying to find the images if you go on google or if you go on adobe or you go you go anywhere to f try and find an image you can't find it really it's really difficult to find it um so the next step is okay if you look for our medical books all midwifery students have either miles or may's midwifery books mm -hmm. If you flip for the midwifery books, again, you get the same pictures, Caucasian, Caucasian, Caucasian. And on the front page, it's, it's great because sometimes they have like mixtures of families. Oh, really? Um, but as soon as you open the book, it's oh, something very, very different. It's so frustrating. Um, yeah. So um, I spoke to a, um, a, my, a family member and I explained the situation and, and I kind of we were just going back and forth about what I could do. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, well, hang on. But if the pages are full of people with Caucasian appearances, and it wasn't hard for them to get those pictures. Why can you not get them for other races? And I thought, oh, okay, that's interesting. So then um, I thought, you know what, let's try and contact some of these pub publishing companies and, and see if they kind of want to join me in making these changes. I did write to a few, um, didn't get much of a response. Really? One, yeah, unfortunately. Um, but Elsevier, who does the Maze and Midwifery books, did get back in contact and they Thanks. were like, you know what, this sounds really good. I'd like to get involved. They are already kind of trying to make changes. So how about you come and join us? So they invited me to join their student advisory board for forthcoming uh, publications. Um, obviously, I said yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but I felt, at the time, I did feel a little bit out of my depth because I thought, oh my God, what am I getting myself into here? <laughs> I've got children, I've got study, I've got placement. Yeah. How can I fit this in? But in reality, it's not a lot that they're asking me to do. It's just recommendations here and there for changes to be mm -hmm. made. Um, so yeah, so I've recently kind of reviewed um, the last edition. Wow. And that went to the editors. So we're just waiting to hear back um, now. But yeah, I think just having that open dialogue and going backwards and forwards on you know, how come we don't have this? Why don't we? And I had a meeting with uh, with the team who um, who deals with the midwifery books. And um, I think even the lady that I spoke to, she was really lovely, was quite surprised that there yeah. were certain things missing. You know, even if it comes to LGBTQ plus communities, there's nothing in there. There's nothing yeah. in the books. If you're talking about um, people's religion, that might kind of impact the way that they wish to be cared for okay. during pregnancy and labour. That's not in there. If you yeah. talk about, um, I don't know, um, say, for example, how birthing women kind of um, labour around the world. Yeah. Nothing's in there. Ah, yes. I think that is really interesting. Yeah. They, they, I, I've... I've got a lot of friends who, you know, international and, and hearing their different experiences and it, you can get very different advice depending on what, yeah, yeah. And I think, um, and that goes alongside kind of talking about decolonizing our curriculum as yep. well, because we don't really implement a lot of practices from around the world. And I mm. think some of them are really important. There are some countries around the world, postnatally, who really take care of their women, you know? Yeah. In the Western world, even if you have a C-section, you are told, 
in a few hours, you need to get up and walk. <laughs> yeah. Go and shower. Get yourself. out. Oh, yeah. Get on with it. <laughs> and, you know, you're told not to lift anything heavier than, uh, uh, say, for example, a kettle. Yeah. But you've got to lift your baby up. Yeah. You know, you got, I've had three C-sections. And, um, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> and it's difficult because your yeah. partner has to go home at night. You know, mm. how are you supposed to look after that baby? Whereas I know that there's other countries in the world where the mum is so taken care of. All she has to do is feed her baby. She's yeah. fed. She's, she's kind of bathed. She's you know, everything that she needs is there. Okay. But for some reason in the Western world, we are literally told, just don't get on with it. Yeah. Um, and I understand there's not necessarily the the money, the funding in there to mm-hmm. provide people with that, the level of care, but there are some ways that it might be able to be tweaked. I Definitely. Know, you know? It's that balance again, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, between you know, idealistic kind of what we would like. I would definitely like to have just been fed and just, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I understand as well, not everybody has that support network. Yeah, so no, that, I'm, I mean, I'm not taking away from, from those. No, but it's, it, it, it is a balance, definitely. Mm. Um, and making sure that, um, you know, we, we do take care of ourselves more as mums because it is really important. Oh, yeah. Someone told me recently about the red tent in some cultures, which is a place where women can go their time of the month and they're oh, looked really? after and I was like that, oh, wow, that sounds, sounds fabulous <laughs> yeah like, I would be there in a shot <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> um yeah um and so moving on for the kind of your campaign where do you see it going do you think about getting back in contact with those publishers that you didn't hear from yes yeah um I know I definitely will be kind of saying look look what these guys are doing yeah you kind of need to catch up yeah you know wouldn't you like to kind of be um you know a company that's making changes too why would you want to be in the dark ages you know yeah and if you are providing care or if you're sorry if you're if your learning materials are about providing care then shouldn't you kind of be up to date? Um, I think I was quite surprised by one book. I'm not going to name the publishing company, but Mm -hmm. there's one book on wound care and it had over maybe 400, 500 pages. About only 10 of those pages was wound care around the world. That was it, 10 pages. Yeah. And you just think, we have to think about these these, um, resources are actually being used around the world. So if you imagine that in an African country, who, uh, you know, they have midwifery students are using books that don't represent them and don't represent the people that they're caring for. So that in itself for me is quite dangerous. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I, I definitely will be kind of <laughs> getting on that and, and pushing it forward. I think, yeah. Um, eventually, in terms of the campaign, I think we would like to... Um, start providing some workshops. This is eventually, this is after like graduation yeah. and stuff. Um, <laughs> maybe doing workshops, maybe taking it into schools. Wow. Um, oh, any kind of institution really, even even kind of um, healthcare institutions, yeah. wherever it may be, wherever it is needed really. Um, and yeah, just keep pushing it, I think. I think it's necessary until big, big changes are made and then yeah. you can start seeing that things are a lot more equal, then I guess we, we've always, we've always got something to do. Yeah. Yeah. I know, and that's the thing. It's about those driving those big changes as mm. well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but thank you so much. Is oh, we had we did have a last question actually, which was the theme of this year's um, Black History Month is time for change, action, not words, which we spoke a little bit about at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I know you like to kind of steer it away from the personal. Um, but you, but is there a story or someone that you would you think we must know about? Just something from you. I don't necessarily have a story, but I did. Um, I've been following um, a few groups on Instagram and Facebook, and um, there are a couple. One is called Community of Cultures, okay. and um, they kind of um, support people from minority backgrounds through their reproductive journey. Oh, wow. Um, They use uh, trained specialists who are representative of themselves as well, um, which obviously creates a safe space for them to be able to kind of express their needs, their wishes. Um, And I think that's really important. Yeah. That's absolutely important. We need more of that. They're based in Sheffield, I believe, and they are on Instagram. So they're community of cultures. So there's one. Uh, You've got the five times more. Um, There's Tunake, and uh, I don't want to... (laughs) <laughs> in the poor girl's name I can't remember the other lady's name but they um they started a campaign highlighting the dif- disparities in maternity care and I think they are they've collaborated now with the RCOG 
Um, What's the RCH? The Royal College of uh, Gynecology. Okay. Um, obstetrician and gynecology, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Royal College of Midwives. So they, they are kind of, they put in uh, six steps to help improve, um, yeah, improve maternity care. Basically. Oh, wow. So okay. Really do you know about those steps? Um, I should do, but I can't <laughs> tell the top of my head because <laughs> I've got so much other information. Yeah, but yeah, of course. Um, they're they, they're all on the websites. Um, and oh, they're, wow. they're, yeah, they they do really really good. So there's lot awesome. there is lots going on out there, and it feels like we are in a period where this change is is going to happen. Yeah, and that's exciting, but it, it feels slow. slow. Yeah, I know, exactly. and that's the it thing. It happens really slowly. Yeah, I always um, think that about change. It's unfortunately like changing the titanic you know the course mm. of titanic titanic sometimes yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so slow but i, but I like, definitely feel like we are moving yeah. in that direction i think the the ultimate the goal the ultimate goal of all of these um um organizations is the same thing we mm -hmm. we want safe practice we want care provided universally for everybody so i think that the, the aim is the same um, but from my point of view, I kind of want to target it right from the beginning, yeah. right where education starts. Yeah. So we kind of dismantle those biases. We take away those um, derogatory assumptions um, and we start again. We yeah. reform the curriculum. Um, and I mean, I'm even working with um, the RCM, the Royal College of Midwives at the moment. So I'm part of their steering group for decolonizing the curriculum, wow. so looking at how we can do it, why we need to do it. Yeah. What does it mean? What does diversity mean? What does inclusivity mean? And really kind of trying to break that break down. It apart and then building it back up yeah. so that it fits everybody. It fits everybody in it. I know this is the same thing going on in kind of primary education. I think... Um, I mean, in my children's school, for example, I know that they've they've kind of started bringing in more yeah. books, diversity kind of books. I don't know that they're really pushing it. I think they're just yeah. kind of placed on the shelf there. It's so. Yeah, for me, it's a bit token at the moment. And that's a bit of homework for me to do, actually, mm. to go out and find out some organisations that are out there campaigning for this as well. Yeah. Um, because from my, from my own point of view, I was quite shocked Um when my daughter brought home some of the learning that she was doing um, at, you know, modern yeah. British London school. Mm. And I thought, is this really what we're teaching yeah. um, our kids about Africa still? You know, so, thing, yeah. and actually I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking I really should have said something to the school at the time. So again, that's something for me to yeah. go back and reflect on. And again, that's why this is, it's really important to be having these conversations. Yeah, definitely. Um, because it's made me think, and is there two things finally anything that you think that we've missed that you want to cover and also just to give us your your handles and your how we can get in contact with you and whether there's any ways that people can kind of get involved yeah so I think um again to help kind of steer this in the right direction and get as many people on board as, as possible um we're happy to collaborate with anybody who's interested in making those changes. So we have an email address, which is equalrepresentation at outlook.com. Um, we're on Instagram at aquilus underscore HCE. Um, and I have just started the Facebook page, but I just, I, I'm not a social media. Host, <laughs> so that that's kind of on its I way. I struggle with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so those are the areas that we kind of, we operate from. Um, so yeah, uh, to, to help this grow, we just want yeah. people to kind of get involved, share some experiences, share some ideas um, and just collaborate more so we can kind of grow it and, and kind of get lots of more people interested in on board. And I'll make sure that all of those details are kind of where they need to be so people can just click on them and find them Fantastic. really, Thank really you. easily. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Gosh.